Primetime Sports with Scott Alexander is underwritten by Task Performance. Crescent City Steakhouse, a true neighborhood restaurant operated by the Voikovich family since 1934, is the oldest steakhouse in the city of New Orleans. Serving only hand-cut, prime-age, corn-fed beef for over 80 years, Crescent City Steakhouse has become a dining destination for both die-hard locals and adventurous travelers who seek traditional, timeless New Orleans cuisine. Crescent City Steakhouse, 1001 North Broad, on the corner of St. Philip, in the heart of New Orleans. Hey, New Orleans, get ready for some rugby. There's a new pro sports team in town, and it's NOLA Gold, bringing world-class rugby to the Crescent City. The game is fast, the hits are hard, the fan experience is for real. Season tickets, lifetime tickets, and game day passes are all available at nolagoldrugby.com. I'm John Goodman, and I'll see you in the scrum. Well, here's the bottom line. say that. Uh, let me tell you. Good evening and welcome to Primetime Sports. Hey, I'm your host Scott Alexander and we all know that Will Wade has been the topic of everybody's talk right now in sports. We're going to pass on that today. Obviously, Javante Smart, we're finding out what his future status is. And also, the Saints signed a couple players today, re-signed Teddy Bridgewater. They signed Latavius Murray. But on this show, we're going to celebrate some seasons. That's right, baseball starting. And I have one, a pitcher from Louisiana that pitched in the major leagues for several years, Scott Sanders, and two championship coaches who've won 11 titles in the last decade. That's right, I have Carlos Sample from Scotlandville and Mike McGuire from Country Day, and Mike's even bringing one of his star players, Caleb Jenkins. And don't forget, the NOLA Gold are in first place right now. You're watching Primetime Sports. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome back to Primetime Sports. We don't often open up with a former Major League player. We have before. You remember when Will Clark, Will the Thrill, was on, and we've had a few others. But what a thrill it is right now because I was actually in the press box when my man right here was playing for the San Diego Padres when they went on to upset my Atlanta Braves, and they went on to the World Series that year against the New York Yankees. And here he is. His name is Scott Sanders. He pitched for five major league teams. I'm gonna see if I can get these in order. The Padres, the Mariners, this is off the top of my head, the Tigers, the Cubs, and I think it ended up with the Indians. Mostly known for pitching for the Padres. He also pitched for Nickel State, and that's what the Colonels called themselves back then before dropping the state part. But Scott Sanders has a son that pitched for LSU last year, is now in the Cubs farm system, and another that plays first base, et cetera, for the Southeastern Lions. And he's got another couple that play volleyball and play softball, but here he is. Scott Sanders. What's up, man? Good. Thanks for having me, brother. A lot of great baseball played in South Louisiana. I say it all the time. I've had all the coaches on. In fact, right before the season at Maneri, we had Jewett over from Tulane. Of course, from your alma mater, Seth Thibodeau. I had Blake Dean from UNO, Matt Reiser. I love baseball. It's great down here. Uh, what's your take when you see the baseball landscape today in college? Well, I tell you what. I, I, I give all the credit to Skip Bertman. You know, when I was in high school, Baseball was always secondary to football sure here was. in Louisiana. Sure was. You know, Skip Bertman got to LSU, and what he did was he started spreading out and come and play Nickel State. He played Northwestern. He played Southeastern. And next thing you know, everybody, you know, he started spreading that LSU, you know, that vibe all over the state. And next thing you know, it started, it started gravitating. And next thing you know, now, if you look at per capita, Louisiana is one of the top 
per, per capita states and putting guys in the big leagues. Every sport. You know, every, you know and, 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 and baseball is, 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 you know, you got California, you got Texas, you got Florida, sure. obviously. But if you look at it per capita, but I give a lot of credit to Skip Bourbon. He's done a great job because it's, the state of Louisiana and college baseball is better than it's ever been. Shame on me. Because I opened up with a question without even welcoming you to the show. <laughs> First of all, welcome. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. You know, enjoying life, staying busy. You know, uh, kids keep me busy. Work keeps me busy. You know, and uh, a lot of fun, a lot of play. But uh, I enjoy. I enjoy all. Uh, I enjoy football, basketball, baseball. This time of year is always great. Great for me. I know you're the regional director at Janney King. And I have to say this because the competition part of you as an athlete does that kind of go into your work life now now that you're in the business world oh big time big time you know, <laughs> that's mean, the one that's the one thing about the, any 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 adventure in it or, or endeavor i take on in life if i'm not the best i want to be the best if i'm not the best i want to make sure i give that top effort you know and, and, and at janet king you know i walked in a year almost a year ago to knowing nothing about commercial cleaning you know and here a year later you know we're doing big things down in south louisiana we, we, we stretch out all throughout the gulf coast you know we're franchise based owner uh you know business but the good thing is we go in and clean commercial buildings and at the end of the day I want to be the best, and the only way you can be the best is by putting that effort in every day, and that's what I do. That's one of those business like bars and everything, recession proof. You have to have clean stuff. So, that's, Danny King, that's right. hey, we have a great show. We might be able to work together. <laughs> that's right. Hey, hey, that's by right. the way, I have to ask you, you're a big guy, all right? Did you happen to play football at Thibodeau? Believe it or not. You didn't. I played my uh, seventh grade year uh, at West Thibodeau Junior High. Okay. And um, the, the the Hado, the coach Hado, who coach Hado is not a, the principal at Tipper High, but he was my coach, him and his brother Glenn and Doug. And so when I was in seventh grade, they had me started working out with the eighth and ninth graders because they were going to groom me to be the quarterback. You know, so I was like, okay. So I went out there, got hit a couple of times, like hmm, I'm not sure. Well, my first scrimmage was against John Curtis. Oh my goodness! Right in, in the seventh grade, <laughs> oh my right? Goodness. And I was the guy, you know, back in the day when you, you know you do the kickoff, somebody stands by the tee and they tell the guys to go, right? Oh, so yeah. that was me. Yeah, yeah. I so remember. I go down there, <laughs> right. they kick down, and I'm running down the field, I'm running down the field. The ball goes to the right, I take to the right, and I get decleated. And the next, you know, I'm looking up at the sky and I see whirly birds. That and sounds it, familiar, it, it actually. Was, uh, it was Stonebreaker. Remember Stonebreaker? I know him well. He's okay. a good friend. He <laughs> depleted like... me, and I, I laid on the ground and said, this oh will be the last goodness. year I ever play football. So I went to the sidelines and told some other guy to take my spot as the, the people to tell it go, and I never did it again. So I played that year, and that was it. You so don't know how I, was, well I was a basketball player. I love basketball. That was my sport, too. Yeah. I love baseball, basketball, same thing. I got right. depleted, too. Very similar. <laughs> uh, and you became a pro athlete, it. though. A little different. By the way, listen, Thibodeau won this week. I know you have to have pride in that. Yeah, so proud of Tony Clark and his boys uh, you know we made it one other time the state championship and lost but Tony had a great year really so proud of him he's one of my best buddies growing up you know I, I saw him a couple of times that's and so awesome keep man. up with him on Twitter and I'm proud of those guys at Thibodeau High proud of my Tigers all right let's talk about this you get drafted you're a kid from Thibodeau you, you played at Nickel State it's it's not like this huge baseball school back then I know Arizona State Texas all these schools were big but then you get to you know the minor leagues, I believe you played in Spokane, and you played. Didn't you play for the That's Isotopes right. as well? Isotopes, yep. That's yeah, I remember yeah. that minor league. That's, That's right. my favorite. Uh, and then you get pulled up to the big leagues, 1993, the San Diego Padres, Tony Gwynn, all these great players. What, explain what that's like for the normal person. Yeah, I tell you, I, I can, I can, I remember like it was yesterday. I was laying in the ho my hotel bed in Tacoma, Washington. Look at that stud right there, man. <laughs> Look at that dude. That was good. That was good old days. <laughs> good and old days. Uh, you know, I was, uh, I was laying in bed, and I was supposed to pitch the next night in Tacoma against the, the Rainiers. And uh, Randy Smith, who actually signed I, me, yeah. he was the scouting director who signed me. He became the GM. And he yeah. said he called me I'm back on the hotel phone, which you know, back in the day we didn't have cell phones. Sure. He was like. I'm laying in bed and the phone rings. I'm like, hello. He's like, Scott, Randy Smith. I'm like, how you doing, Randy? He's like, hey, I got some bad news. I'm like, okay. So you're not pitching tomorrow night. I'm like, why? You know, first thing I get, I get upset. Like, why? Yeah, what? What's up? He said, because you're pitching, you're pitching tomorrow night in, in San Diego. Oh my! The back goodness. end of a doubleheader against the Colorado Rockies. And man, I think I jumped up, hit my head on the, on the ceiling. You had to, you know right? You had to. And uh, so first thing I do, I run downstairs, get a USA Today, start looking at that lineup. You know what I mean? Fly into San Diego, and and Tony Gwynn at the time had 1,099 hits, and it was a doubleheader. Andy Bennis pitched the first game of the doubleheader. Andy Bennis. That's right. By the way, for you youngsters, that was a superstar. That's star. right. He was the first per, first pick in the draft, and yeah. a big time player. Right. And Tony Gwynn, believe it or not, went like 0 for 3 in game 1. Which never happens. Which never happens. Right, right. So here I am. I had to stay in the clubhouse for game 1 because I wasn't official on the roster. So then I go out and start game 2. And uh, so my, in my debut, I beat the Rockies. I think it was 6-1. to one, Wow. And, and Tony Gwynn got his 2,000th hit. Are so, you serious? Yeah, and it's so funny because at the end of the game, uh, I walked off to, and they gave me a standing ovation. And it was towel night. And they had like towels waving crazy, you know. And 
when I got done, we went out to eat. My, my father, my mother, father, my family came in town, a bunch of friends. And we went, I said, man, I said, man, there are a lot of people that stand tonight, Scott. I mean, I told my parents, and they're like, yeah, they had like 52,000. I said, no way. Because I had no clue there was 52,000 people in the stands until I walked that's up the crazy. mountain. That's crazy. That's how locked What a moment. That's how locked I'm in so I was. I'm so glad I asked you that question. Yeah. What a moment. Yeah. By the way, for you under 40, Tony Gwynn, by the way, some might argue the best pure hitter ever. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to throw that. Yeah. Ted Williams, yeah. guys yeah. that could just hit yes. the ball every time. That's Contact right. hitter. Right. Wade Boggs was another one I could always yeah. do it. But. Just for one second, what's it like playing with Tony Gwynn? I tell you, he was a, number one, he was a, an amazing man and a human being. A hu- and he's passed one, away now, right? He passed away, you know, yeah. uh, he's gone, but at the, so rest in peace. But uh, incredible father, yeah. incredible role model, incredible teammate, you know. Right. He, um, he's the one guy, I tell you all the time, he's no doubt the best hitter ever lived, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, obviously there was other great ones. No, not I, to, I'm not, not to, disagreeing, you know, yeah. man. Anybody but I tell him. you what, but, um, you know, for, for a guy to come, he, I tell kids all the time, you know, I'd still do some, some hitting lessons and pitching lessons. I tell them, Tony Gwynn hit every day off the tee for 30 minutes by himself. And he'd pick the balls up and he'd do it again. And that's what he says all the time. He says, he says Scott, because if I can hold my swing off this, if I can hold my swing off this ball sitting still, that's going to make my, my swing better when it's coming. coming Just you know, for coming those of you that don't know, uh, Ted Williams is last player to hit 400. Okay, right. 400. That's I right. mentioned him. And that's in the 40s. Uh, Tony Gwynn and George Brett were really the only two that flirted, flirted with seriously with 400 right. at the end of a season. Wade Boggs was not far behind. That's right. But guys that could just get on base yeah. via the base hit. That's right. And it was the best. As far as you go, you got to pitch. You opened up a playoff series in 1998 as the starting pitcher for the St. Louis Cardinals. Yeah. Describe that moment. Yeah, yeah. That was amazing. You know, we, uh, we actually, to, 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 to segue to that, we went into Dodger Stadium with the Padres. We were down two games. We had to win three games to win the division. And it was the first year to wild card. So if we didn't win, we might have still backed in as the, as the yeah. wild card, you know. But so I, I pitched Friday night. That was the first year of the wild card. That's right. Yeah, it was. And so, so I pitched Friday night and the pressure was on. If I don't win on Friday night, we, 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 don't, we lose this year. So I went on Friday. Andy Ashby won on Saturday. And then, and then Sunday we were trying to, trying to set up pitching for, for, the, for, the world, for the playoffs because we didn't know if we had a, a, a playing game or not. So we pitched Bob Tewksbury, who, who hadn't pitched. I remember Tewksbury, right. yeah. But it was a very good, crafty pitcher. We ended up winning that game two to one. So then we go to game one, and, and Boach comes to me and says, he says, Sam, man, you got game one. And, man, I grew up a Cardinals fan. So here I am pitching for the Padres against the Cardinals. That's crazy, man. And, 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 and in, the, in the game one of a playoff. So I get on a plane to go on there. And all of a sudden, I don't feel too good. So I'm like, oh, no, this is not good. So I get there, and I tell my trainer, listen, don't tell anybody, but I don't feel well. So they pump me with two bags of IV. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and it's an off day, but we were practicing. And I get to the park the next day, and I didn't have my greatest game. I did okay. And yeah. I, it's so funny because Boach took me out with uh, bases loaded and three guys on with two outs. And he brought in a, a reliever named, uh, I can't think of his name at the time, but he was just a, a guy who came with the minor leagues. And, sure. and Ron Gant hit a, took a, hit a double off the wall. That's my boy, Ryan Gant. <laughs> and the funny thing was, I saw Boach six years later. He said, "Scott, you still mad at me for taking you over that game?" Because I, I, most of the time, I own right-hand hitters. You know what I mean? I did have yeah. my troubles against lefties. Yeah. But uh, but that was amazing. And once again, at that point, they had fifty-eight thousand people. There was the biggest crowd in the history of Bush Stadium. So it was it was such an honor. You know what I mean? I, I didn't win the game, which was a bummer. But at the end of the day. I, just like I told you, former competitor, I was not letting them know that I was, I was not up my part because I was not giving away game one this of the playoffs. This was 98? 96. That was oh, 96. 96. That's 96. 96. So, 98, you did win. Your, yeah. Y'all's team and y'all, y'all were in the World Series. That's right. And you beat the Braves. And listen, that the Braves were in the World Series five yes. years and nine. And five That's out right. of nine, they That's went. Right. And that one... I thought 97, 98, two years they didn't go. They were two best teams. Two best teams. I yeah. mean, and then y'all came in, and I mean, I got to be honest, I was like, Shocked that the that the Padres did this. I'm not even sure. Were you still around? Yeah, yeah, I was there. Yeah, yeah I was on yeah. the team. And the thing about it, we that team, we were a team. We were one cohesiveness. You know, we, we picked up like a Jim Lairitz who kind of came in. Yeah, he had a couple big home runs for us. No but we doubt. had Greg Vaughn, Ken Kemenetti. Oh, Lairitz killed us when Steve he was with the Finley. Yankees. The following, you know, I mean, we had, we had it, Kevin Brown. We were loaded. But the thing about it, Kevin that team, Brown. yeah, Kevin Brown was a man. Who was the left hand pitcher? We had um, Sterling Hitchcock. St- Right, and we had Andy Ashby, we had Joe, we, we were loaded. Yeah. But the most important, we loved each other, man. Yeah. We had a team that, when you beat us, you're gonna beat us. If we fought, we were fighting 25, 26 strong. You know, they, 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 everybody pulled on the same rope, and that's the way. That's the only reason we got to the play, to the World Series that year. And obviously, we lost to the Yankees. We had we had Game One, kind of one at a close three uh, one call. I mean, a, a two two call. And oh, the year, World Series, I yeah, remember it. I when remember you had the home run, and they 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 boat race us after that. Yeah, dude. Uh, listen, uh, listen, every. 
time you pitch for a different team. I mean, you pitch for the Mariners and Tigers, and, and obviously at the end of the career, the Indians. But the, there's mystique about pitching for the Cubs for whatever reason, even when they weren't good. Right. The Cubs are the Cubs. You know, here's some, some teams you pitch for. But what was it like pitching for this team right here? I tell you, my, my summer with the Cubs was my favorite because the, the thing about it is you play a lot of day games. So it actually feels yeah. like a real job. Right. You know, you can actually play a game go out, have a nice dinner, yeah. or play a game and take the kids and do something at night. You know, because every time, every other place you play, you basically, you, 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 go, to, you go to work at, at two o'clock and you get home at midnight, you know? So, but Chicago is, 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 is the, my, probably my, favoritist, my favorite season, although we did come out last place, which was a bummer. That's all right, that's all right. Hey, by the way, you have four kids and you have one daughter playing softball, you have a young high school playing volleyball, but right. the ones I, I'm familiar with are the two that played college baseball. One that played at LSU. You right. saw a picture of Cam right there. Used to be That's Cameron. Right. He goes That's by right. Cam. That's right. He's now in the Cubs farm system. Twelfth round pick, which in baseball is fabulous. It's not like it's not like That's other right. sports where hey, because baseball you had that farm system, and then you also have your son playing for Southeastern. I believe he's a first baseman. That's right. That right? Scotty Sanders. That's right. Uh, chip off the old block. That's right. Uh, you, I know what it's like to be a dad. I don't have kids that are playing high level. Uh, you know, college yeah. sports, That's right. but you love them all. And I just want to know what it's like because you're a former athlete to see your kids basically playing the same sport you are and excelling. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a blessing. You know, I, uh, it's very nerve wracking, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because the, the one thing is, you know, when you, when you play for as long as I did and, and you're on that mound, you can really control the game. Now all of a sudden, and I coach, I coach both of them growing up, so I could, at the same time I could even control part of the game at that point when I was coaching. But now that I'm remo removed from coaching them, going and watching is so nerve-wracking. I'm sitting up there half the time. I'm a nervous wreck. You know, last year watching Cam, you know, pitch at LSU, which was a, was a, you know so proud of him. Watching Scotty play, watching my daughter, watching my little guy play. But it, but just sitting back and not being able to control things because hey, I've, I've been told at times I'm a control freak, yeah, <laughs> right? right? Which right. is okay. I'm good with that. I, think I can live with that. And uh, but you know. But it's such a blessing, and it's, you know, get to get to watch these guys play. Scotty's gonna wants to go on and be a, a medical doctor, so he's he's gonna be graduating in uh, in May with a biology Congrats, degree. Congratulations! Thank, yes, for thank that. Yes, thank you with, with a minor in, in economics and, and, and Spanish. You know, so he wants to go on to med school. You know, Cam's doing his thing with the Cubs. He's out in Phoenix now, um, and, and uh, he's he's loving life. You know, he's loving he's loving pro ball. My daughter, she, she she's a first baseman at Coastal Alabama Bay Manette, and she's hoping to go on next year. I know year. Bay Manette well. That's right, you old Faulkner yeah. State, you know. And uh, so she's going to uh, hopefully go on and play a, at a four-year school next year. And my little guy, lo he loves volleyball, you know. He, he played for the U.S. national team for, uh, program for two summers. What's you know? his name? Jaden. And what's your daughter's name? Lindsay. All right, Lindsay. I want to give them some that's love. Right, that's right, in Lindsay case and Jaden. That's watching right, the show. they will. They will. She yep. can catch the show in Bay Manette, that's right. by the way. That's right, okay, it's perfect. It's on yep. over there. But, uh, you know, Jaden, Jaden, his love is, uh, is volleyball, and, and, I, and I love every second of it so you look also like a guy that could play rugby <laughs> that's and right. i'm gonna give you a couple tickets for our next game it's next saturday and i'd love to see you there scott right. i'll awesome. even throw you in the vip brother yes. uh and, and, and whoever else that's i give right. tickets that's to right. i'll, I'll right. give you a shot but here he goes two tickets for the game against austin we're in first place by the way yeah, i like it's, it i like it's it. the nola gold right there yes, this is right. a, a little rugby schedule we can bring out the big ones and also we have other gifts i've got a gift certificate for uh, this restaurant we love. It is called, I'm gonna give you this one right here. That's two. That's called Perfect. Shays de la Shays. It's yes. uptown on Maple Street between Calton Broadway. Come up and bring your loved ones. For sure. Uh, and also this, try this, feel that. Oh, that's nice. Task performance. You ever heard, have you, I've heard about them. Have you heard about yes. them? Well, now you get to put one on. That's that right. color is the color of a Janet King. That's right. And we are going to represent my man. Thank you, brother. It's Thanks for having me. It's such a pleasure to have you. Pleasure to be here with uh, you. Baseball is such a fabulous sport. I That's wish right. it had picked up a little bit here. But the problem in New Orleans, it's too hot. That's it's right. It's hot, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, but, hey, the Baby Cakes have one more year. Support baseball. And Scott Sanders, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me, brother. All right. Hey, man, we're not done. I'm going to switch gears, though, because I only get to talk high school like twice a year, maybe three times when they're signing day. But... I talk a lot about it when you have the football championships and I have a couple of their coaches and players and I do it again when basketball. Basketball just ended. We're going to have two of the very best. Hey, think about this. In the last eight years, they're in two classifications, the next two coaches I had, right? There's 16 possible state championships. Well, these two guys have won 11 of them. Six out of eight for one and five out of eight for next. They're coming up next. Carlos Sample and Mike McGuire and Mike even brought one of his star players right here on Primetime Sports. Primetime Sports with Scott Alexander is underwritten by Task Performance. 
The owners of the Delachaise Wine Bar on St. Charles Avenue have opened up their newest creation uptown on Maple Street called Chez Delachaise, a new local wine bistro featuring a larger menu of small and large plates, a brighter atmosphere, and full table service. Additionally, patrons can enjoy a large patio out front as well as an extensive wine list offering selections from around the world. It's Chez Delachaise, 7708 Maple Street between Carrollton and Broadway. Rock and roll will never die. It's old New Orleans fire, oh my. Come on, baby, let's go rock and roll at the city lane. Oh my, let's roll, let's rock and roll. Baby, do the rock and roll. At Embracing New Orleans soul with style and fashion wear from NolaShirts.com. Show off your love for one of America's unique cities with shirts, belts, and hats in a variety of colors and styles. NolaShirts.com proudly celebrates the culture and embodies the spirit and determination of people from the Crescent City. The tradition lives on at NolaShirts.com. Welcome back to Primetime Sports. Hey, I told you, after our Major League pitcher, Scotty Sanders, we're going to talk prep basketball because this is the week they all got to shine. Many state championships across the board, across the state of Louisiana, but one that seems to happen almost every year. A team that's gone to the state finals 10 straight times. They've won six of those, including the last three. Of course, we're talking about Scotlandville, and the coach of Scotlandville is sitting right here. He has got... 300 and something wins in 12 years over there. Do the math. He's getting over 30 wins every year, usually up to 35. His name is Carlos Sample. He's coached many great players. One plays for Golden State right now, Damian Jones. And, of course, Javante Smart, one of the best freshmen in the country at LSU. And here he is, Carlos Sample. Welcome to the show, my friend. Thanks, thanks. Man. How you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good now. <laughs> I mean, just champions all the time. Just championship games. You've been in 10 straight years. Please explain how this happens. <laughs> uh, well, obviously, it's, it's, the Lord has to bless you, and it comes with a lot of hard work, you know, from a lot of individuals as far as not just myself, coaches, players, administrators, you know, the school as a whole. So um, we're just going to continue to ride this wave and stay humble and hungry. Well, I think a lot of folks around the country, you had a three-time Gatorade Player of the Year in the state. I mean, that's the best player regardless of class. Of course, Javante Smart. And I think a lot of people are like, okay, in your classification, we got a break now. Javante's finally gone on to LSU, and now he's got to kind of start up. But you really didn't have to start over because you had a couple great players in Joseph and Beekman and a great supporting cast. But going into this year, did you think possibly this might be the year you, you might not get there? Um, well, no, I mean, I, I don't, you know, expectations are high, you know, so, um, you know, every year brings a different challenge and, you know, we just want to just put our head downs and just continue to work and, and just when the smoke clear, just in the end, be there with opportunity just to win a state championship. Yeah, it seems like I looked at your record. It seems like every year you, you got 35 wins, 36 wins, 34 wins. This year it was 34 and two. Uh, what was the secret to this team's success as opposed to to maybe past teams? Um, well, basically, I just think that it starts with a little, little leadership, those guys policing one another and, and just continue to trend to just work hard and, and put themselves in position day in and day out to do the things that are characteristic of Scotlandville basketball. And they really, to be such a young group with no seniors, they really bought into to what they've seen, you know, when they were there their first year. And, and they feel that this is ours now since Jay is gone. So we have to step up to the plate a little more. And, and, and they provided leadership, and they did a great job of it. Wait, you're telling me this team has no seniors on it right now? <laughs> no seniors. No seniors? This is like this is like you high in football the year before. This team just wiped everybody out, and all of a sudden they're all back. And, of course, they did it again. So this team's coming back. By the way, you're going to have to wait till 2021 until you have a chance after the other team because they're coming back for another championship. You mentioned the Scotlandville way of ball. What does that mean? Um, just means like every day bring your hard hat, you know, during school, after school, just come and give it 110, 
every day, whether it's the academics on the track, that's the first thing we do is on the track in August. Um, and in the gym, you know, just, just working, working hard and, and just trying to get better every day, better than themselves every day. Well, I love you said, okay, mo most of us say when you go extra effort, you go give us 110%. You mentioned that, but then you went up 20 more percent. What's 130% take? <laughs> <laughs> just as much as 100%, 100%, you yeah. know. So um, just, you know, make sure you dot your I's and cross your T's, you know, and, and be perfectionist, you know. Um, and the sky's the limit. I don't put limitations on my players. And, you know, I just commend, commend all of them that come through the program because, you know, like I said, if, if you don't want to work, you know, don't come to Scotlandville because, you know, we're going to challenge you and we're going to continue to challenge you day in and day out and, you know, and, and make you guys work. All right, all right. As a basketball coach, and I played many, many years, there's a thing called line drills, right? I mean, I don't know if they still run them. I'm assuming they do. You, you run from the baseline to the free throw line, back to the baseline, to the suicides. half court. Y'all call them suicides, all right? We called them line drills back in the day. And then whoever finished uh, last was shooting the free throw, and if he didn't, you're going to do a bunch more. So my point is, in the rugby office that I now work in, we have a big, giant picture poster coming down the stairs from the clubhouse and it's got, a, it's got guys running line drills, and it's got one guy whose foot is about that far away from the end line, meaning like he cheated a little bit, right? <laughs> right. But only by a foot. <laughs> and the thing says the difference between winning and losing is because everybody else touches the line is this one guy. Do you That's have right. that mentality? Um, I mean, we have honor code, you know, um, and everybody has to make their time, you know. It's no almost. You can't almost win a state championship either you win or you lose you know one or the other so you know so we we on the honor code but you still just you have to get it done you know whatever whatever's in front of you you know you leave no stones unturned you just have to get it done 130 percent 130 <laughs> baby you heard it here hey by the way um you know you've won titles in the highest classifications we're not talking like single a or anything and no offense to those teams but you played the best competition. You've done it in the public school system, I think, 5As and all that. And then you've gone into the select. Now you're, you're doing it in Division One, mm -hmm. And you do it against the, the Catholic League, which is a famed league out of New Orleans. You beat St. Aug. Uh, you're doing it against everybody. It's not like this is a <laughs> fluke, all right? You've got 10 straight final visits. You've won six out of the last eight championships. And my next guest has won five of the last eight. How does this happen every year? Because it's like these teams are good. You're beating I mean, I, you know, I just can't explain it. It's just God has just blessed me, you know, to be around, you know, some, some individuals who have the same goals in mind that I do. You know, we're just trying to, you know, continue to make history and, and just set the bar, raise it as high as we possibly can. And, and, you know, he's blessed us with, you know, players to come in and, and follow that trend. And, you know, we play tough schedule. We play the, the Madison preps, the Ravia year in and year out you know, the country, ones, country day, yeah. you know, so, so, you know, I mean, it's, it's just about us trying to, you know, every year just coming back, trying to be better than we were the year before. So uh, this is where I want you to be completely honest, really, seriously, pretend it's just me and you in the room. Which, which win has been the most memorable? Off the top of your head, don't think about it. Saturday, the past. Uh, I knew past you were going to say that. The, the last was the most memorable. Where it's, it's been it's because, because a lot of people really didn't expect expect this group to to go as far as they did, but the guys that are in the locker room, you know, and just to see them grow, you know, as individuals, you know, that was more of a treat than just raising a trophy, you know, just to see them taking ownership, you know, being responsible for their, for their academics, for their actions, you know, because, I mean, it's, everything's not peaches and cream, but we have some great young men, and, and, you know, that's a part of the process of growing and learning to be responsible, productive citizens in life. So um, no major, no major, you know, um, no major accidents or anything like that, but just to see them just grow as young men, you know, and grow on the court, you know, it was just a blessing to see them. Well, I knew you were going to say that you're the last one or possibly the first, but you got you got <laughs> that one right. Hey, real quick, I have to ask you about Javante Smart. What a great player. What was it like coaching a talent like this? I mean, like I said, in the Open, three times in a row, the guy <laughs> has been the state player of the year, regardless of classification. Uh, that's got to be special. It's rare. What was it like coaching him? Right. Oh, man, it was a treat. I think I, think I enjoyed it more than him. Um, you know, not not – not often do, do a high school coach 
get to even coach a talent such as Jay's, but um, he's a great kid, you know, great individual, works the first one in the gym, the last one to leave, you know, just a coach's dream, and I'm glad these guys got a chance to play with him, and that makes my job a little easier because they see the work he put in, it's not just because he, you know, Javante smart, but he puts the work and the time and the effort in, you know, to perfect his craft. I know you, when you coach a player, particularly for a long time, they become like children to you as well. And I wanted your opinion when you're watching him get his time to really shine. When, when Tremont Waters went down, he had a little injury and he got to play against Tennessee. And then you just see him score 29 points and you're watching your son, basically, your <laughs> other son, uh, do this. What kind of proud moments do you have watching this? And, and tell me what you were thinking during this game. Um, well, it's, it's just a joy just to watch the success he's had. And, you know, I played college ball on yeah. the college level. And, and just to see him go out there as a freshman and do what he's done, I mean, I'm just, you know, I probably was the happiest man in the building at the Tennessee game, you know, and, and just sitting and watching the development and, and just the work and the effort that he put in for four years at Scotlandville. And just to see him go out there and perform like he did, not just that game, but all season long for LSU. Um, you know, I wasn't surprised, but then again, I was just as elated and happy, you know, as if it was me on the floor. And then, you know what, I, I can't stand because the guy, the kid is the SEC player of the week for the freshman of the week. And then he said, he's asked, he said, you can't play the next game. And I'm just sitting there like, how can you do this to the player? His name gets mentioned on a tape one time and that's it. And it's just his last name, not even his first name. And it could be anything. But my point is, is, what, what were your thoughts running through when you saw that he couldn't play in the game? I have a picture I actually want to show you, and I, I forgot to put, give it to our, our producer, but I have a picture of him clipping the net, and it's a beautiful shot, and I, I, I'm going to forward it to you. But mm -hmm. I don't know if you were at that game. You weren't because you had a championship game. Right. Uh, but I was there in the arena at the PMAC, and I just thought of, man, what it would have been like I didn't even get to play in this game that we clinched this momentous occasion at 16 and two and winning the SEC after two years before the team had been two and 16. Right, um, it, it, it hurt, you know, it hurt me not to see him out there, but this is the type of person that Jay is, you know, um, as soon as we won a championship, we're in a locker room and we get a FaceTime call and it's him, you know, knowing that he's not playing, you know, but he's still, you know, he's still calling us, congratulating us on the state championship you know, and, um, you know, my heart goes out to the situation, you know, but, you know, he'll be back, you know, um, what God has for you, nobody can stop it. And he's a, he's a great individual and he does great things and great things are going to happen for him, you know, yeah. so I'm not worried about that at all. And back, back to you, look at that. What a good kid. <laughs> back to you. Uh, you did play at Southern University. You were a big time scorer. Uh, you put the <laughs> ball in the hoop. Uh, you played against, you played, was it after Avery Johnson or did you have a year lap, lay of left? Because we played, him. yeah, we played uh, against him in high school. But, you know, following Avery Johnson, tell me about your career at Southern. Um, well, I played for Ben Joe, you yeah. know, um, played with some great scoring teams, you know, um, played, you know, behind him with Avery. And then after that, you know, I kind of, kind of took over, kind of like this team. I like, you know, now it's yours. Everybody's waiting to see. How's this team gonna do without Avery Johnson? You know, and, right. and we went out. We were fortunate enough to go on and win SWAC, win the, the regular season of the tournament, and go on to the NCAA tournament. You know, so um, I had a great career at Southern. Wouldn't trade it for the world. Not many can say that they played in the NCAA tournament three three years while in college, but but I can. You know, three so, years. So I'm happy about that. I remember. You know, I remember uh, two of those. Do you remember the three teams you played? Um, Temple, North Carolina. <laughs> And um, Kentucky. <laughs> yeah, that's John Chaney Temple, by the way. Back then, in the 80s, right. that was a big, big deal. Oh, by the way, North Carolina and Dean Kentucky? Smith. Yes. I mean, <laughs> Dean Smith and obviously, was it Eddie Sutton back then? or It was, um, yeah, I think Eddie, it was Eddie yeah, Sutton Eddie right Sutton. before Rick Patino. Yeah, Rich yeah, yeah. Chapman. Era, yeah. yeah, how crazy is that, man? Yeah. I mean, yeah. these are some of the blue blood programs, and you got to play in the tournament. Was that, was that pretty cool? Yeah, it was cool. <laughs> it was cool. And, um, last year, the disappointment we got to play in the NIT, we, didn't, we wasn't as fortunate to make it, but it was still postseason, but it wasn't the NCAA, but... You know, I mean, I, I had a great college career and, and all that I learned, the experiences, you know, the relationships, I try to mold that into just, you know, and to teach my kids, you know, um, my players, you know, 
the little bit that I've learned along the way. So when they go to school and do those things, you know, it's just, you know, a great experience for them to, to go to college, you know. You're doing some things in history. I mean, you're still a young man. I mean, literally, you have years to go. John Curtis, JT Curtis, is still coaching in his late 70s. And I, I see the same kind of thing. If you want to stay at Scotlandville and build this thing, because you're on the same pace of championships. I think he's up to 26, 27 now. Yeah, well, last week I got a chance to, to meet Curtis. We went to scout Curtis last week, go to the school, and, and I just took pictures of the trophy case. And, like, man, this is the standard in Louisiana. I mean, we – you know, I'm happy for what we've done, but man, we have a long way to go to, to catch JT. I don't know if it's gonna ever be be done, but that's, By the way, that's he's, motivation. He's just a few wins from the most wins in yep. <laughs> high school football, pro football, college football history. I mean, this guy has been that. Yeah. So don't don't make it. If you don't get to there. That's no big deal. You are on your way right now. This, your pace is just as good. Put it that way. I, we give gifts on this show, and you know, you know the rugby. You know, I love the rugby. We got a game coming up. It's only about. 12 day, 11 days. It's coming up this we're first place. It's a it's Nola Gold Rugby. I'm going to give you a schedule. You but here, it's the first time I'm doing this. We're giving tickets to our guests now. They play the Austin Elite in in a week and a half. And that's yes, going to be down in, in New Orleans at, at Gold Stadium over there on the West Bank. And also, we have a gift certificate to Shays De La Shays. I bet you Thank don't you. go get this many gifts in other shows. And to, <laughs> I went and got the exact color that Scotlandville wears. It's a certain shade of black, and I got it for you. Task made it specially for you. It is Thank you. Thank task you. performance. Feel that. I want you to feel If you've never heard task performance, it's going to be the softest thing you ever put on your body. And I was sport Unless you're married, with, of course. I was so sported with pride. That. All right. Congratulations, man. Thank you You have so a lot much. to be proud of. I appreciate it. And I got, we have a tradition here. We signed the ball. You're going to be next to Dale Brown. John Brady, Carl the Mailman Malone. I know you scouted out a spot oh, already. It's I'm our with some tradition. Company. <laughs> you are, and you're just as elite as those guys. Thank Trust you. me on this. Carlos Sample. This ain't the last time. That's not good English. My my fourth grade grammar teacher will not be happy that I said ain't. But this ain't the last time you're going to hear of Carlos Sample. I'm proud to have you on the show, my friend. Thank you so much. And, uh, and congrats Appreciate to everything you're doing, all right? Thank you so much. I'll take God my bless. pen back. Appreciate you. <laughs> That's Carlos Sample. We're not done with legends because I, we got another one in the making. A guy, well, he's one off. He's won five of the last eight, and Country Day has won seven state titles total. And he's coming up next. His name is Mike McGuire, and he's bringing one of his star players, Caleb Jenkins, who's heading to Tulane right next on Primetime Sports. Hey, welcome back to Primetime Sports, and anybody that knows me knows how much I love the game of basketball on all levels. I'm going to the Pelicans game tonight. They played the Greek Freak. I went to the LSU game on Saturday when they won the SEC championship, and I've been to a lot of high school games, including the quarterfinal game with my next two guests. They played Newman. Of course, they are Metairie Park Country Day, well known as Country Day around these parts. They call themselves the Cajuns. And by the way, head coach Mike McGuire has been there 21 years, and his success is unparalleled lately. This team has won two of the last three championships. They won two more a few years before that, and they won one back in 2009. So by my count, that's five in the last 11 seasons, five in the last 10 years. Make it, is it five or six? Five. And they're doing some great things over there. Last time he was on the show was 2017 after they won that state title. He brought his star player, Roman Williams. Well, this time, he's bringing another one. His name is Caleb Jenkins, and he seems like he's been starting since the Bush administration. He's been around for a while, four-year starter, a four-year letterman, three-year starter, integral part of that championship team in 17, and once again this year. Here they are, Caleb Jenkins, Mike McGuire. Welcome 
Well, I should say for you, welcome back to the yes, show. Yes, indeed. Had Thank you, you on with a, when I did the radio as well for two years. You won those in 13 and 14. Yes, Caleb sir. Jenkins, pleasure meeting you. You too. Absolutely. Look at how sharp you look, brother. You look <laughs> Thank great. You. Thank and by the way, I know Tulane's looking at you. You've got some other schools like Millsaps. We know that. Xavier up in Maine, there's one. And Loyola, my, my guy, Stacy Hollowell. Coach Zab, I'm going to start with you. Uh, before I even get to what happened there, what are you thinking for your future? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure yet. Uh, I did want to wait till after the season to fully commit. Sure. Um, I'm actually planning on visiting uh, Loyola and Millsaps sometime uh, soon. Sometime soon. Great universities. Yes, Great yes. Universities. Uh, I love the coaches. They're both um, very nice guys. The assistants. I mean, it's a bunch of very well. You've been a country day for 12 years. This, this guy's been in your life for a long time. Mike McGuire, you're no stranger to this show. I love to celebrate champions. I, I do it during the football season. We usually bring two or three coaches on both basketball and football. Um, what's the secret to country day success? Because now you're just, you're expected to be there as opposed to hoping to get there back when you started coaching. Right. Well, I appreciate that. And uh, guys like this help me uh, be a successful coach. Great players make great coaches. But I, uh, I really appreciate these guys. They give everything they have every day at practice. They really believe in the program. As Caleb started as a ninth grader, he, he had role models in front of him and you know Eddie Ludwig's of the world and Matt Derenbeckers and Roman Williams and those guys laid the foundation for these guys. And th their goal each year is to get to the, what well, used to be the Cajun Dome, now is Lake Charles or wherever it may be, and give themselves a chance to win a championship. And so, um, you know, we've been very fortunate. Caleb has uh, been very blessed to uh, been playing with some great teammates and won it in 17 and won it in 19. So he's been a major part of that success. Well, I want to bring up those teammates. They deserve, they deserve a, to be talked about because I've, moved to, I've been at least one country day game since I moved back six, seven years ago every year. And usually it's two or three. And I watch this team, the way they play basketball, they play the game the way it's supposed to be played. They play it hard. Obviously, they're well coached. But Justin Abietta, the junior, who could, who's gonna, who could probably play college in three sports. This kid's right. great. You got a little influx when you got Christian Becknell. Obviously, he came in, a big man, multi-talented. Uh, I feel like I know every one of these guys' yes. dads. Uh, <laughs> Talbot, Ross Talbot, his dad was my attorney brother. You go on and on. Right. This team, and who's the other one? Uh, Thomas Polinard yeah. and, and then Caleb. So we had five seniors this year, yeah. and all five were major contributors. And Justin would be the junior, and then we had a, a sophomore, uh, Zane Hunter. So those and Nikki Corciani. And Nikki, now Nikki's the Nikki's the other one. You know Gabe Corciani, who yeah, played right, who right, played right, at right. UNO. Well, Gabe's so, going to be on the show next week. Good segue. Yes, He's former <laughs> UNO superstar, by that's, the way. That's right. He Gabe and Gabe had another son, Michael, who played for me. Yeah. And we won in uh, 13 and 14. So 2013, 2014. Michael was uh, the most valuable player as a freshman and as a sophomore in those championships. So, you know, these guys start young and they, they really work hard and they, they, you know, fortunate to be rewarded at the end of the season. I have noticed that. I want to ask you because it seemed like back in my day, you really didn't get a chance to play until you were a sophomore. Mm -hmm. But I noticed when I first got back, you guys were playing guys in ninth grade. I mean, and even in the eighth grade, I think of Roman, Roman Williams. Right. Maybe. Yeah, and I was like, wow. I guess if you're good, they're going to put you in. So that as a kid growing up and you're watching the program, you went to Country Day as a, mm -hmm. a grade school, middle schooler. Knowing that he played guys earlier, did that, did that help you make work a little bit harder? Because I want to get in as, as soon as possible. Oh, it, it most definitely did. I mean, Coach Mike, he preaches toughness, and that's what we're all about. I think that's one of the key reasons why we pulled off the state championship this year. Uh, we got a good, close-knit group of guys who just wouldn't back down away from anything and so you know watching Michael and Roman and all of those guys it, it really pushes you to be the best that you can be because you want to eventually be in the spot that they are. My uh, alma mater Dallas South got to the championship they had a double digit lead lost at the end but you had a great moment in that game this year y'all beat the Cavaliers twice one of them was on a tip in can you tell us what happened I mean you're your guard, your point yeah. guard, usually you guys aren't the guys getting the tip in. But tell me what happened, because that had to be a great moment, beating a really uh, good team. Yeah, that was, that was really fun. I mean, we, we just don't give up. I mean, uh, Coach called, called my number for a play. Um, and so I went and I shot it, and I knew it was coming out off the wrong way. And so then uh, I remember it was Christian Becknell who uh, shot it again. And I saw that that was coming off the wrong way as well. And so, like, without hesitation, I just went up and I just got the, the right tip 
right touch on it. You guys had a good mix of players. You know, and I, I noticed that early in the season I went to a game and I, I went to that Newman playoff game. Uh, and you got the influx because Talbot was missing most of the season. He had a football injury. And he's a big part of your team, a big guy, too. Yes. But uh, you have different combinations, which I like to see in teams. LSU's got that right now where you can play big, you can come a little smaller, you can go fast, or you can slow it slow down. down yeah. uh, tell me about your, your style of play. Yeah, I, I think that we used about nine players yeah. this year uh, at the varsity level pretty regularly, two of which uh, were freshmen. And, um, and so depending upon the lineup, I mean, he's, he's super fast. And we have another guy, Zane Hunter, is super fast. But the other kids are big, strong football big players. Big guys, man. And so we played a lot of zone. We pressed and fell back into some zones. And, and he and Zane up top were really quick. And Corciani, very aggressive. And then we had the big boys, Ibietta, Becknell, Thomas Polinard, uh, Scott Isaacs. Those guys all are big, those guys. Man. Yeah, they really. Big. Isaacs, yeah, I forgot yeah, to talk Isaacs, about him. Yeah. yeah, so he's a freshman, and Evan Nunez is a freshman, and they got they got considerable minutes for young kids, but they all contributed, and we felt like we tried to make the system fit their 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 styles. And so uh, Killip was our leader, and then Justin got into shape, and he became the second leading scorer, but. Those other guys, Becknell had a big finals. He had uh, 11 points and 12 rebounds. Yeah, he did. He was he great. He was great in the game. But he's Corci a really good basketball Corciani player. Corciani had yeah. double-digit assists in two of the three playoffs. So he, he had a great run. And everybody has to play well to beat a team like Dunham. I mean, Dunham is really good. And, um, you know, to win that state championship game, everybody had to play well. Well, I want to talk to you about that. I think y'all, they were the one seed, I believe, Dunham. Yeah. And I know they have great athletes. This, this is another program. That's come a long way in the last several years. Yes. My nephews both went to the school, and I watched it closely. Coming into this game, you know, you obviously confident. Y'all have won a state championship since you've been playing. Um, <clears throat> but they're the number one seed. What were your thoughts coming into the championship game against Don Caleb? Um, I'd say that it was just focus on the game plan. I mean, uh, we got a great uh, group of coaches and uh, we've got Justin Napoli and Eddie Ludwig who former, both former star player right yes sir and they both just work so very hard I mean Justin Napoli was preparing for uh, the championship against Dunham which it, it happened to be um since uh, since summer they were right y'all were ready summer. for that one huh? yeah so they beat us in the semis the year before that's it okay you want to take out the team yeah so right. you have extra incentive yourself right yes sir yeah Hey, hey, by the way, I have, I have a philosophical question for you because you, we played in the same era back in the Catholic League in the early 80s. What is the difference of today's high school basketball, in your mind, right. from back in the early 80s and late 70s when we, we were playing? Well, the Catholic League was really tough even back then. So I think the, the style of play I tried to bring to, to country day, right. you know, just the toughness and the man-to-man -man and, you know, just, you know, playing, playing. We, played a lot of people I just think the depth today is you know we have more good players so sure. I think the game has changed in the, in the sense that we talked about using nine players back then we didn't use as many you know players they had a few scores the three-point line has changed the game you know so when we played they didn't have a three-point line and now the three-point line that, has, that, has, has changed the yeah, game I wish I had that yeah and it, it's, <laughs> and it, yeah, and it extend, you know it extends the floor and um, you know we have we've had a lot of really good shooters over the years that have spread the defense so that Ludwig and those big guys can score. So uh, that has changed because it used to be a lot more physical right. just in oh, the yeah. paint. You now, now, you, yeah, now you can spread people out. Look at, look at yeah, Beck. Now, you know, Beck that's for you, Beck. Yeah, that's that's it. It. Thank you as well, <laughs> Christian, and, and, and obviously Mom. Hey, yeah. um, listen, this, this is unusual. I remember back in the day, like, you, you made the playoffs because, I mean, the Catholic League was just so – Strong. You've even made the playoffs. It was like a huge deal. But you're winning championships, man. I mean, this is not the playoffs. No, I feel like Allen Iverson. Well, it's not practice. <laughs> it's, just, it's not a game. No, yes. it's the. It's not the playoffs. It's the championships, man. This is unbelievable. It really has been fun, and I think our competitive schedule because we play all the a lot of the Catholic League guys. We play Scotlandville. We've played all the you know, probably four or five of the state champions from this year. We played and. Um, these guys can play at that level. So it's, it's rewarding for them to play at that level all year and then get a chance to do it in a, a big, on a big stage. All right, I'm going to ask you a selfish question and be honest with me. Which championship is the most memorable for you? And I know this is easy to say this one, but 
Sometimes people say they're first, and you know, you're a senior. This you're more of a leader. Mm -hmm. Was it the first time? Because you were an integral part of that team, mm -hmm. or was it this one? I, it was. It was this one. I mean, I felt like I had a bigger role in this one. Um, it was fun leading the younger guys as well, because uh, knowing that they looked up to me, you know. And so it was. It was just a lot. That's of fun. pretty cool, isn't it? Yes, sir. Most really outstanding is. player. In yes, the, sir. All right, when you get that award, because you won, and then I know you're a team guy. I've watched you play. You're all about team. Mm -hmm. But when you get that award, what, what emotions are going through your head? I'm, I'm just blessed. I mean, you work hard, you put the time in, and it, it's sure to pay off. So, hey, I mean, listen, you're a senior, man, and you yes, went sir. out the right way. Yes, and, and you know what's sweet about this thing is you got it as a sophomore, and I'm sure you appreciate it, but you saw when you were in middle school that they had won a couple more mm -hmm. before that. But then as a junior, you're close, but this team beats you, and you have a chance to avenge that game oh, against yeah. that team. Oh, yeah. Tell me about that feeling. I mean, there's a lot of emotions going into that. I mean, you just you just got to stay focused. I mean, that's all I can say. I mean, look, you look forward to games like those where you're competing against someone you've uh, lost to, and you know, just bouncing back. It's it's fun. It's a lot of fun. The only thing I have noticed about when I've watched you because I've seen, I guess, at least seven games that you play. You focus. Yeah. I mean, you. Oh yeah. You are laser focused in the game for real. And I want you to, to comment on that because am I wrong? Because no, I, watch, no. I, I, I feel like this is a sport I do know. Yeah. And I watch it closely and I watch the guys on the field, their body language. And, and this guy. Am I, it, yeah, Caleb is our most intense player. Yeah. I mean, he's absolutely the spirit, you know, spirit leader and the toughest guy we have on the team. And uh, can score the ball as well. But, no but, question. But defensively, he brings it every practice and every day and it carries over to the other guys. And so when he says teaching the younger guys, he demands a lot from those guys as the coaches do as well. But I always tell the seniors, they're an extension of the coaching staff. So he's got to help out. Everybody's going to do their part. And he did a great job this year of being a role model and leading by example. So when you, when you have a, your senior diving on the floor taking, he took a couple big charges in a championship game. And that helps the other kids see, hey, I got if Caleb's doing it, I've got to do it. I gotta ask you a question because it's for whatever reason us as humans we we tend to remember and I don't know why this is at least me I do I remember the the disappointments more oh, yeah. almost than the like what could have been like what what game and I like I missed that shot I could it's gonna change everything do you remember those oh yeah no oh, yes, okay. people will always ask what well, you know do you remember this win do you remember I said well I remember those losses those you losses know? man because yeah, they are, stick oof. with you. JT said the same thing man he goes JT's won, what now, 27 state titles in football? Yes. 27, think about that. Wow. Uh, I asked told Carlos, I said, you got, Carlos was like, I went to the trophy case and I said, this is my goal here. Right. I mean, he goes, he goes I've got six yeah. in the last eight, but that's a long way to go. But yeah, you remember those, but now I'm gonna throw the same question to you and I'm running out of time, but which one do you remember most? I, I think the 2014, we beat a Madison prep team that, oh had, goodness, that yes. had Sampson and those guys. They had five Division One players, not all in that year, but, but over that program. And you had program. a freshman or a sophomore get yes. the, the most Michael, outstanding Michael, player? Yeah, yeah, Michael Corciani got the, his sophomore, and he carried us. And we had so much adversity <laughs> in that game. That one is the most memorable. But this one, we were – I, they had beaten us by 18 early in the year, and it could have been worse. I mean, they, they really Dunham did. Yeah, Dunham beat us. Oh, that's the All-State Sugar Bowl. Yeah. They beat it. They beat us really bad. And these guys, you know, understood where we where we were and where we had to go. And I think that was the rewarding uh, part. So I would say, you know, the, the 14 was a miracle, and then this one was, you know, uh, just a, a big upset. Did you upset. sign the ball back two years ago? I think I did. You yes. did. I'm gonna yes. let you do it. By the way, sweet. We got. Carl the Mailman Malone, second league oh, scorer wow. in NBA history on this ball. Many greats. Dale Brown, one of the greatest coaches ever, have signed that ball. Give him the one shot right quick. Pop that on him. There you <laughs> go. So I can get down here and take these. <laughs> the magic of television. Here we go. Very good. Uh, and we give we give out gifts on this show. And uh, and that's a good thing about coming to this show. And since you're not affiliated with any college yet. <laughs> this is totally legal, um, and it really is legal anyway, because I have no affiliations to the schools, so we, sometimes we'll be safe. 
We'll give you the XL. That's task performance. We use task. We love task. We use task for our, for our shooter shirts. Do so you really? The kids, the kids love to put the shooter shirts on. They don't want to take them yeah, off. Yeah, they so. feel so nice. Yeah, you love this so task? Nice. Yes, yeah, task. Yeah, really oh my good. God, you know, the owner, his, his, uh, his son played for uh, Newman. You'll yeah. beat him. We, the, well, his son and his grandfather. His grandfather I'm close to friends with. He right. started Al Andrews, two-lane yes. legend, yes. Where, where you may be going, possibly. we got a couple gift certificates to give a little, a little more for the adult, but you still got a little star. Bring a little Sweet. data over there. It's uh, uptown. And we also, I'm going to get you involved in rugby. Because oh, wow. this is a man's game right here. <laughs> and this is a major league team we have in town called the NOLA Gold. We got two tickets for next week. I'm even going to give oh, you all a couple sweet. schedules. Oh, that's I'm going to pull sweet. these down here. And we got that. Thank here, you very here. much. Yeah, check this out. We got four more home games. First place team, you're, you're rooting for a winner right there. Yes, Just man. like yourselves. <laughs> Mike McGuire. Thank you, Scott. So Appreciate proud it. of you, man. Yeah. I've known you for many years. Thank you. And I enjoyed my Jenkins time. went to a Final Four with this guy in Atlanta in 2002. And I'll give him a shout out. We ride solo. We yes, ride. Uh, hey, we're going to give him some props. Hey, I got to thank everybody that came. Major League pitcher Scott Sanders. Enough said right there. He pitched many years in, in Major Leagues for five different teams. And also, Carlos Sample, what a run he's had, much like the guy to my left right here. Hey, for, for everybody here at, at CST and WLAE who produces this show, Will Hill, Everybody at WLE, we got Lexi in there, we got the Redhead Tsunami, we got Hunter. He's handling the, the prompter, which I don't use a prompter, obviously, I don't know what I'm saying, but he handles the time right here. We'll see you next week on Primetime Sports.